Okay, so what would happen in an application where a shaft is spinning over a long period of time if the shaft was not in a ball bearing but was instead in direct contact with the part itself? I can't visualize that in my mind. So let's say my fist is the, is the part. It's some kind of housing or just a, a block of whatever. And I have this shaft that needs to spin inside this, this part. Right? So it's spinning real fast. It's spinning real fast. If I do not have a ball bearing at this interface right here, if this shaft is just spinning directly in a hole in this part, can you visualize that? Uh, I would see creating a lot of friction, heat, and then wearing out the part really fast. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, and how about, like, do you think that the motion would be very smooth? Um, no, no, it wouldn't be as fluid as with, uh, with one of these, definitely. Yeah, yeah, agreed. One of these. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> So, instead of using a ball bearing, you could use uh, a sleeve bearing. And what, what are the pros and cons to using a sleeve bearing over a ball bearing? Is this a sleeve bearing? Nope. We don't have a sleeve bearing here, actually. Do we have a picture of it in here somewhere? Um, maybe not. A sleeve bearing is basically just uh, a sleeve. It's... It's a, a hollow cylinder. And what was the question? What's what would be the like the pros and cons of actually? My question was the pros and cons of using a sleeve bearing over a ball bearing. But maybe we should reverse that. What are the pros and cons of using a ball bearing over a sleeve bearing? Do you remember yeah. sleeve bearings in the video? I don't remember watching anything about sleeve bearings. Let's just. Let's see, we'll go to McMaster here. They have a great app. And I'm going to type in sleeve, oops, sleeve bearings. Okay, so here's some examples of sleeve bearings. We'll just look at the simplest kind, which is this guy right here. I'm not sure if we can, yeah, we can try to zoom in a little bit. So you can see this is just a hollow cylinder. That's, that's all it is. Um, but there are different materials. Like you might have um, a, a nylon sleeve bearing, like a plastic sleeve bearing. This one is a, a bronze um, sleeve bearing. And it's actually like embedded with some oil as lubrication. And the oil allows uh, a shaft to, to turn you know, pretty smoothly. Um, so, and uh, sleeve bearings are, are typically less expensive than ball bearings. So, like, why, why would you use a ball bearing if sleeve bearings are less expensive? I don't know. Uh, it sounds like sleeve bearing could be maybe longer. That's true. Yeah, sleeve bearing could be longer. So, you, you might have better support. Cover more area. Right. Yeah, with a single sleeve bearing. Versus um, a single ball bearing. I don't know. I mean, the, the main difference seems to be that these ones have the balls inside, the bearings, mm -hmm. and the sleeve doesn't. I don't know how much that will impact. Yeah. The functionality. Yeah. So um, ball bearings are always going to give you like more smooth and um, longer like life, the longevity of your application. Just by you know by the nature of what it is with, with balls inside that, that turn and facilitate that ro rotational motion versus a sleeve bearing if I was using if, if I needed an application that that facilitated rotation and did so fairly smoothly but was not real high speed um, and, and maybe well yeah it was not really high speed that might be a great application for a sleeve bearing, where, whereas if, if it was going to be much higher speed, higher RPM, um, and I needed real, like, really high precision, then I would use a ball bearing. Okay. I do have a question here. Okay. Which is, 
on point number one, point E. So one E. One E. Do you think that you can read this one out loud, please? Sure, elephant. Bearings typically have a load rating associated with them. How much force they will withstand and still work well. And this specification is something a designer should be aware of when sourcing a bearing for his or her design. Okay, so I highlighted uh, when a designer should be aware of. And my question is how? How do we read and look for it? Great, okay. So let's see. We'll go to McMaster. These are sleeve bearings, but that's okay. Um, see this column here? Dynamic radial load capacity. Radial load is, if I have a, a bearing, well, let's do it this way. If I have a bearing and I have a shaft that goes through it, radial is going to be like in the, the out, that uh, pointing out away from the bearing. So uh, radio would be, if I were to pull this pin down, down against the, the inner race of the bearing, that would be radial. And uh, that's what this is saying right here, this dynamic radial load capacity. And most bearing suppliers will have uh, that specification in their documentation. Okay, so whenever we're like maybe on SolidWorks and designing something, how do we know which bearing to choose? Depends on your application. I mean, you as the designer, you need to define what that requirement is. Does your bearing need to support 100 pounds of radial load, or does it need to support 5 pounds of radial load? I mean, is, is a, a person hanging off this shaft that's spinning inside the bearing, or is there, I don't know, who knows what else, is uh, just a, a light, like a spur gear that's, that's hanging off, which is really light. So that needs to be something that the, the the designer dictates, or you know, the customer dictates. I think it'll be it'll be good to do uh, maybe an exercise in this lesson that we have to choose. Like we're putting a, in a problem scenario, and we we can choose which bearing to use. Because otherwise, I understand what you're saying, but I don't. I can't even picture a time. How would I even go about it? Like I'm I'm designing something on SolidWorks. Mm -hmm. There's so many bearings here on McMaster. McMaster, right? Mm -hmm. McMaster. And, I want to even know where to start, how to look for them. Like, what's, what's the first thing I look for? Uh, the width of the radius? I don't even know where to start. Okay. Um, I think there will be, like, design challenges where we'll get into that more in depth. And maybe we'll defer that question until that time. So that's my question. So let's go straight to the discussion questions now. Okay. All right. So I think we're on this... Uh, Oh, well, we kind of just answered that. How would a designer know how much load a ball bearing can handle? What might he or she do to resolve a situation in which the ball bearing cannot handle the amount of load expected for the given application? When I, when I say load, that's more or less synonymous with force. Load is like a, like a higher level way of saying force. You can have like a torsional load or a linear load. Anyway, um, so let's say we have this, this shaft in here. It's going through our bearing and it's turning and um, we're still in the de design phase, right? We're looking in SolidWorks right now and we look at the, the specification, the load rating for this bearing and it's 10 pounds. And we know that this, this shaft is going to have 20 pounds hanging off of it. So what what could we do to um, accommodate the the actual uh, force, the load that is going to be in this application? But my question before we do that is, how will we know as mechanical designers that they're going to they're going to be twenty pounds of uh, force or what's the other word? Load. Load. How do we know? Does SolidWorks tell us? No, no. That's that's like a design input. That would be a design input. So the customer comes to you and says. We need to hang a 20, a 20 pound mass off of a shaft that is spinning at 100 RPM. So that might be a, a design input that your customer gives to you. And then it's your job to take those design inputs and find hardware that will support them. Got it. Okay, so to address the question, if it's 20 pounds uh, and uh, this one can also stand 10, what does a designer do? Mm -hmm. Replace it with one that can. Okay, yeah, that's one so, option. Uh, <laughs> All right, so that that's a totally valid option. Re re replace it with one that that has a higher load rating. 
So let's say that you, you go back to McMaster or whoever your bearing supplier is and you say, I need one that can hold 20 pounds. And you look and you look and lo and behold, there are no bearings that will hold 20 pounds. What could you do then? Start a company that makes them. <laughs> <laughs> I love the entrepreneurial spirit. <laughs> sure, that, that might be a more expensive option, but another option is you could use two of them. You could just take this bearing and use another one and put it right next to it. That, that would have been a whole waste of time and resources starting a new company. <laughs> okay. So you... <laughs> Yeah, so either use two or start a new company, whichever you want. <laughs> so you can put, I remember from the lesson, you can put one on each end, right? That's the... Yes. One on yep. each end. One on each end. That's a great... What if you put three? Um, so one thing to keep in mind is that the more bearings you have... It, Usually, all of these bearings are going to be in the same, we'll just call it the same housing. Let's pretend my hand is a housing. And so, all these bearings are going to go in the same housing. So, you might have one bearing here on this end, and maybe you put your other bearing over here on this end. And then you have two bearings that are separated, and your shaft going through, and the, the shaft is supported on both ends by a bearing, and it just spins really smooth, really nice, everything's great. Um, <clears throat> one thing to keep in mind, though, is that the hole that gets bored or drilled or cut through this housing has to be um, you know perfectly straight all the way through uh, <clears throat> otherwise uh, well let's see maybe a better way to say that is okay let's 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 sketch something this is a good thing to sketch all right so let's say we've got um, we've got our shaft, and then we have one bearing right there. one bearing right there and then you know these bearings are, are all inside of some some big housing contained in there there's a, a hole that's drilled through that housing in which the bearings sit what does housing mean a housing is just it's just like a oh, how do you explain a housing it's just <laughs> uh, it's super general it, it could mean a lot of things but it's basically like a block of material that holds stuff Okay. Yeah. So you've got this, this generic housing with a hole, a bore. Uh, a bore is, is a term that's often used when you're talking about a hole that's inside of a part. Um, you've got this bore going through it, and you have two bearings in there. So what if your hole, so I'm going to draw just kind of a generic side view of this. Um, so something like that. And then we've got... Again, side view, bearing here, bearing here, and we've got our, I'm going to draw the shaft going all the way through because realistically your shaft probably extends beyond your housing. So you've got a shaft like that, and it's nice and straight, but but what if the hole, oh yeah, you have your, you have your hole in there. What if the hole got drilled with your housing at an angle? like that. You've got your two bearings. You've got... Now your shaft is at an angle, right? And we don't want that, and uh, maybe that's not even the best way to explain this. Um, I think, I'm trying to think about the best way to explain why you might not want a third bearing in there. It has to do with what's called over constraining, over constraining your, your shaft. Um, if if you have, let's go back to the this one where it's straight. If you have a bearing here and a bearing here, uh, and, and you push the shaft through, it it's going to be 
relatively easy to get the shaft to go all the way through both of them. But if you have a third bearing in here, and if your hole is drilled really well and your bearings are all very precise, which they are, you're, there's probably not going to be a problem. That shaft is probably going to go through without any issue. But adding a third bearing in here doesn't really give you that much more support. And it increases the, the chances that these three bearings are not going to be perfectly aligned with one another. Maybe this bearing for whatever reason is like one thousandth of an inch shifted up a little bit relative to, to these two bearings at the end. And if that's the case, when your shaft tries to go through that middle bearing, it's going to encounter some resistance because it's not perfectly aligned. So uh, having a, a three bearings just increases the chance that you're, you're going to have some binding or your shaft is not going to go through you know, all three of the bearings. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, somewhat, but it, it just tells me that basically a rule of thumb is just to have a bearing on one on each end. Yeah. Not overcomplicated, right? Yeah. Yep. My last question would be, what prevents the bearing from sliding all over it? Great question. Yeah. So there are a couple ways of doing that. Sometimes you will actually have a press fit in your bearing. And so you'll have to use some kind of tool like an arbor press or something to, to press your... Uh, uh, your, your shaft into the bearing. Um, that can be challenging though because if you're not careful you can damage the bearing itself. Um, an another way to do it, this is kind so of a, a press fitting like this, right? Yeah, press fitting meaning like there's an, an interference fit so this is not a bearing, this is not uh, meant to communicate within the context of bearings, this is just this is a press fit. It, the pin won't come out of the hole. So basically uh, press fitting a a pin you call a or shaft a shaft yeah in there right but this is not the most common way you're saying right yeah probably not um, because you do have to be pretty careful because you're going to be applying a lot of load a lot of force to press fit that shaft in and if you're not careful you could damage the bearing um, <clears throat> and then another thing is it, it's really hard to get that shaft out if if you ever wanted to get it out so another way that you could do it is you could take your your shaft and you could freeze your shaft, like literally put the shaft in the freezer. And what that's gonna do is cause the shaft diameter to shrink just a tiny little bit. It's gonna contract all those molecules in your I thought that when shaft. you freeze something, it expands. Like when you put a soda in the freezer, it can explode. Well, water is different, but metal, most material, it, it's gonna contract when you freeze it. And when you heat it up, it will expand. I haven't taken a physics class in like four years, so. Thank yeah, <laughs> so, uh, but if you have a metal shaft, you put it in a freezer, literally, leave it there for a few hours, and it's going to contract just a very, it, it, you will not be able to tell that it has contracted, but if you take like a micrometer to it, you'll be able to see that it has. And, and you know, bearing the, the, the inner race diameter is very, very precise. It's down to a few ten thousandths of an inch. So you only need your shaft to contract by a few ten thousandths of an inch. And then you, you slide it in, uh, and very quickly, within you know maybe 30 seconds or something like that, it's going to expand to, uh, it, it's going to start uh, climbing towards ambient temperature, and it's, it's going to cause the shaft to expand, and at that point, it's going to be locked in place. In most cases, excuse me, do you want the bearing to be moving, or do you want it to be still in one place? You want it to be axially fixed in place. So it will, axially meaning, this direction, you do not want it moving relative to your shaft. You want it to be fixed in place. Okay. So the the, uh, the other way to do it, actually there are two more ways that you could do it. One is to do what I call a, a thumb press fit, where all that's required to, to press your shaft in is just thumb pressure. You, you can just by hand push it onto the shaft. And <clears throat> you have to have really precise um, dimensions, both your shaft diameter and the, well, the inner race of your bearing is going to be whatever it is based on who the supplier is, but your shaft diameter has to be really, really precise. That, I mean, you're going to be in a range that's like a few ten thousandths of an inch in order to achieve that press fit, but that's doable. And a lot of times you'll, you'll send your, 
your manufacturer the actual bearing that you want to use and say hold that bearing you know keep that in hand and 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 test it out on the shaft as you're making the shaft and when you have that you know that just thumb press fit feel that's when you're that's when you're you're done now, the last way to do it is by using some retaining rings so you would have your shaft you have a groove in the shaft here and here and you put a retaining ring here and here and then that that shaft would be kind of uh, you know prevented from sliding back and forth but really that thumb press fit in my in my opinion is is the best way because you want there to be a really nice and snug fit between your shaft and your bearing anyway um, if, if there is gap between your shaft and the, your bearing then uh, it, it has not been created correctly or de designed correctly. There should never be any like shake or wiggle or gap in there. It, it should be a nice snug fit. Otherwise, your bearing is not going to do its job. It's not going to work properly. Covered all the questions. If you found this content helpful, consider enrolling in our signature program at mypipelineacademy.com. Whether you're an individual interested in beginning a new career as a mechanical designer or a company interested in training your new engineering hires, our signature program helps students develop the practical skills they need to be productive mechanical design engineers. Seating is limited. We hope to see you there soon.